Hey, welcome to another edition of Virtual Storytime Not Quite Live on a Saturday. And today's theme is dinosaurs. Oh yeah. So those of you who've been paying attention, we've been doing Dino November books. Sorry. Well, we've been doing Dino November posts all throughout November. So I hope you guys have enjoyed them. Um, one of them even got flagged. Wow. I don't think we did anything bad, but you know what? It's all good. <laughs> We love dinosaurs and we love looking at them. We love seeing them do some fun stuff in the library and we love reading about them and singing about them. So how about we get started today with some dinosaur books, some dinosaur songs and rhymes. Okay, so here we go. And of course, um, hello, how can I not let some of our all-stars join us today? Oh yeah. You guys have anything to say to everyone? <laughs> Oh, it's like, oh no, that's Jack Frost, and I'm going to see that. Oh, there we go, we've got someone there. I can't remember, I feel like this one's here to be too. Yeah, so there we go. Oh, so we have some dinosaur friends with us today, so let's get started. All right, <laughs> so of course we know, got to do our good morning song, so here we go. Good morning, good morning, good morning to you. Good morning, good morning, good morning to you. Good morning, good morning, good morning to you. Good morning, good morning, good morning to all. Yay! You guys are such rock stars with that good morning song. Hope you guys are going to enjoy what we have to read today. So here are the books. What the Dinosaurs Did Last Night, A Messy Adventure by Rafe, Rafe, Rafe and Susan Tuma. Okay, <laughs> sorry. So before I move on, I just want to let you guys know that actually these, this, the creators of the dinosaur, um, what the dinosaurs did series are the ones who pioneered Dinovember, which is what we're participating in this month. So, um, so this story time is really supposed to be rounding out the uh, month of Di November, but um, of course, you know there'll be a few days after that with more posts. So don't worry, don't be sad if you don't if you think like we're gonna stop Di November today. It's gonna end on the thirtieth, which is Monday. So, um, so no worries. But here we go. Um, so that's that's the background of this book. Now, <laughs> let me quickly get through to the other ones. So the next book we are going to read is oh say can you dinosaur <laughs> all about dinosaurs by bonnie worth illustrated by steve hathaway tiny t-rex and the very dark dark this book is by jonathan Stutzman, illustrated by jay fleck and finally how do dinosaurs say i love you by jane yolen and mark t all right so before we get to our first book how about we do a song? And for this song, hmm, how about we use a couple of our dinosaurs who can actually sit up here with us and don't sit up at each other at the same time. <laughs> here we go. So we got two dinosaurs. They're gonna help me sing in this first one. And this one is called Dinosaurs, Dinosaurs, and it's sung to the tune of Teddy Bear, Teddy Bear. So those of you who know the tune, sing along, and if you don't, well, enjoy our song. <laughs> dinosaur, dinosaur, stomp around. Dinosaur, dinosaur, shut the ground. Dinosaur, dinosaur, some things here. Dinosaur, dinosaur, wish you were here. <laughs> I think I said that wrong, so let's try it one more time. Dinosaur, dinosaur, stomp around. Dinosaur, dinosaurs, dinosaurs, sound they fear. Dinosaurs, dinosaurs, we wish you were here. Yay! <laughs> so let's give a warm hello to Carno and Blue. Um, some of you may have seen on some of the posts how they, they're always getting at each other, but they're like the best of friends, guys. Um, you know, friends get into spats, but they always come together. Okay. So let's read our first book. Oh, of course. You 
Magna cannot read her book without her fun elbow glasses. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Here we go. <laughs> what the dinosaurs did last night. A Very Messy Adventure by Reef and Susan Tuma. Ooh, there's a to whom it may concern at the beginning of this book. To whom it may concern, and that means you. You probably heard stories about toys coming to life when no one's watching. Maybe you don't believe in that stuff. But if you're reading this, it means weird things may have already have happened in your house. Well, <laughs> we know some weird things have happened in the libraries, right? This book is published by Little Brown and Company, which has um, offices in New York and Boston. It usually starts with a mess you can't explain. Your parents will think you did it. You might try to blame the dog. Mm-hmm, this is looking at you girls. But it wasn't the dog. No, no. Then who could it be? Anyone have a guess? That's right. It was the dinosaur. <sighs> Dinosaurs are always hungry. That means the kitchen is the first place they'll go. They'll lick all the lunch meat, chew up the cheesy puffs, and slobber in the salsa. Oh my goodness, these dinosaurs are making a mess. If the dinosaurs find your toys, they'll want to play. Next thing you know, they've toppled your block towers, unstocked your sock, mon sock monkey, sorry, and trashed your checkers. What? No. No. Your parents probably don't let you play in the bathroom, but dinosaurs aren't very good at following rules. Mm -mm. No, they're not. No, they are not. The worst is when they get into your parents' stuff. Nothing is safe with dinosaurs around. Whatever you do, keep them out of your laundry room. Dinosaurs are dry, clean only. And if they tell you they need to use the washing machine or dryers, tell them no. <laughs> Dinosaurs get into the most trouble while you sleep. That scratching sound you hear late at night, it isn't a three-eyed monster or a bunch of clumsy bats. The dinosaurs are up in the attic, trying on your mom's doll clothes and getting into your dad's old comics. Mm -mm. It's a shame. Don't get too worried. They aren't all bad. Most people don't know this, but some dinosaurs dabble in drawing or play Picasso with Sometimes they go too far. Sorry guys, I want to make sure you can see this properly. Look at what they did. All that mess. Pretty soon, you'll try to stop them. Everybody does. Maybe you'll tie them up with a jump rope or lock them in a closet. When that doesn't work, you'll keep trying. Don't bother. The dinosaurs can get out of anything. Look at all these traps in the hot dog, and it's like free food, totally safe. They don't, they didn't fall for that. Anything. See that box? That box was built for them, and they got out of that. Guys, these dinosaurs are real. The dinosaurs will cause more and more trouble until they finally make a mess so big and so messy, you won't even be able to believe it. What? What are these monsters doing, these dinosaurs? Then one day, you'll wake up and your house will be clean, no broken dishes, no spilled mi milk, no marks on the walls. A few days will pass and then a few weeks. You'll wonder if the dinosaurs will ever come out again. You might even question whether they were ever alive to begin with or if you made the whole thing up. Don't be fooled. See that dinosaur right there? Just lying in wait. Mm -hmm. Don't be fooled. That's exactly what they want you to think. Mm -hmm. They try to trick you, but you know better. <laughs> well, that was great. I love this book. Uh, and I hope you guys have a chance to check it out, which you totally should because it's available for checkout.
today. Okay, so how about we do a rhyme? And we're going to use some of our dinosaur friends. Oh, sorry, you guys can see. Dinosaur friends. Um, big dinosaur here is, is coming for a different song. So we're going to leave them behind here. But we're going to use five dinosaurs. <laughs> Actually, I guess he could be part of this song. And maybe we could... Yeah, we're going to put him here. Because this, this song is actually called Five Enormous Dinosaurs. <sighs> Five enormous dinosaurs letting out a roar. One went away and then there were four. See? One, two, three, four. <laughs> Four enormous dinosaurs munching on a tree. One went away and then there were three. One, two, three. Three enormous dinosaurs didn't know what to do. So one went away and then there were two. One, two, two enormous dinosaurs having lots of fun. One went away and then there was one. One enormous dinosaur afraid to be a hero. She went away and then there were zero. No more dinosaurs. What are we going to do? I think we're going to read our next book. <laughs> But before we do that, how about we give a round of applause for our wonderful dinosaur volunteers. We've got the big T-Rex, Carnotaurus, we've got um, Indo, sorry, Indominus Rex, or, oh yeah, this is not Indominus, okay. And then Blue, the Velociraptor, and finally, Pachycephalorus, or as I like to call him, Pachy. <laughs> All right, so. <laughs> so, why don't we read our next book? And for our next book, hey, why don't we bring a story time pal that we all love? Hey guys, it's the cat in the hat, and the cat in the hat is going to help me read. Oh, say can you say dinosaur? <laughs> all about dinosaurs. This book is written by Bonnie Worth, and it's illustrated by Steve Hapale. You ready, cat in the hat? I sure am. It's going to be fun. Well, let's get going. You want to sit right here? Um, I keep trying to find a way. Let me see. Can I find a way to read the book and have people see my story time, pal? Here we go. So this book is published by Random House in New York. It's part of the Cat in the Hats Learning Library. We're going to learn about dinosaurs. I'm the cat in the hat. <laughs> you have met me before. Today I will speak of the great dinosaur. Dinosaurs lived on the earth long ago before you and me. So how do we know? I think we're going to find out, right? Right, cat? Sure. <laughs> From fossils, dinosaur teeth, eggs, and bone got stuck in the muck. Then that muck turned to stone. These fossils are old. They are dusty and worn because they were made long before you or I were born. Oh boy. <laughs> Dinosaur hunters dig in the ground. All over the earth, these fossils are found. The hunters use tool to chip chip all day. The fossils come loose, then they pat them away. Ooh, that is so cool. Archaeologists do some really great work. To the dinosaur labs, every bone, tooth, and bit is carefully shipped to see how they fit. Ooh. Here we go. Step up and enter the museum hall where dinosaurs stand. Some are big and some are small. Mm -hmm. We've seen some big ones, right? Here we will play the best of all games. Oh, say, can you say the dinosaur?
dinosaur's name. Hmm. You ready, cat? Sure am. <laughs> wow. Cat in the hat is pretty good. Here we go. And after you set them, then you get to see them in the Cat in the Hat's Super Dino Museum. <laughs> Dinosaur names are not easy to read, but give it a try. I will help if you need. Oh, say can you say Ankylosaurus? Ankylosaurus. With a club for a tail and a back full of spikes, this dino was strong like an army tight arm, like an army tank. Yikes. Now can you say Maya Sora? Maya Sora. There is one thing we know that this dino did best. She kept her kids cozy and safe in their nest. She kept the nest tidy. She got her kids food. She was a good mother to her dino brood. Good job, Myasaur. Ooh, one that we all know, Tyrannosaurus Rex. Ooh, we got a big one right here. Now say Tyrannosaurus Rex. You said that quite nicely. Now you better go. T-Rex is no kitten. I think you should know. I think we should move on, don't you think, Cat? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this T-Rex was strong with long teeth sharp as knives. When most dinos saw him, they ran for their lives. T-Rex was a hunter. He hunted for meat. Other dinosaurs were his idea of a treat. T-Rexes were crazy, huh? Oh, say, can you say Triceratops? This dinosaur's head had three horns upon it, sticking up out of a so hard sort of bonnet. But though he was smaller and not half as fierce, his head was too hard for T-Rex teeth to pierce. So after a few dozen snaps at his face, T-Rex looks for dinner in some other place. Goodness. A T Rex is on the prowl. Can you say Brachiosaurus? This dino was taller than 51 feet. Just how much food do you think he could eat? Nearly as much as a truckload of hay is what he would gobble day after day. That is crazy. Can you say? Iguanodon. What he did with his thumb, we think that we know. He, we think that he used it to jab at his foe. Now say Deinonychus. 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 Terrible claw is what that name means. We think that this dinosaur hunted in teams. Kind of sounds scary, doesn't it, Cat? Uh -huh. I don't think I'd want to meet a Deinonychus. <laughs> Can you say Archaeopteryx? 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 This fine feathered friend is the earliest known. This bird might have glided. This bird might have flown. One thing we must ask, and we must be quite firm, if this bird was so early... Did he catch the worm? Hmm. These are very intriguing questions. We want to know. What do you think, Cat? I think he caught the worm and then some. Hmm, I think so too. It's getting late night. Now I see night is falling. Your museum is closing. Your mother is calling. Before you head home, dear Sally and Dick, I have a surprise that is really quite slick. This dino is the earliest cat that is known. No one has seen it. It's never been shown. It's super terrific. It stands here before us. Oh, say, can you say? Cat in the Hatosaurus? <laughs> oh, goodness.
I love it. Wow. I hope you guys enjoyed that that book. That book is very funny. And it taught us quite a bit, didn't it? Well, thank you, Cat in the Hat, for joining us for this book. Well, it was really fun reading with you guys. Bye. <laughs> oh, the Cat in the Hat is the best. Yes, he is. Okay. So we're going to sing our next song, which is to the tune of Ten Little Indians, which... Anyway, we're not going to talk about that. We're going we're gonna to go with it. And we're going to move on to the next song. So, one, day, two, day, three, day, 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 day. Um, So, what we're going to do is I'm going to bring them all. And as we go through them, I'm actually going to let go of them. So, here we go. So here we go. Now we're going to go from smallest to biggest because this song is called One Big, Two Big, Three Big Dinosaurs, but I don't have 10 dinosaurs. It's called Big Dinosaurs, actually. And there are supposed to be 10 big dinosaurs, but I don't have 10 big dinosaurs. So we're going to go from the smallest to the biggest, which of course is our big T Rex. Okay, so here we go. One big, two big, three big dinosaurs. <laughs> That's great. Four big, five big, six big dinosaurs. <laughs> oh, did I do too many? One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I did do too many. <laughs> Seven big, eight big, nine big dinosaurs. Ten big dinosaurs. They all lived a long, long time ago. They all lived a long, long time ago. They all lived a long, long time ago, and now there are no more. Hmm. <laughs> Wait, I have to walk this one so that you guys really see. There are no more. They're all gone. Sorry. Well, it was great knowing you. <laughs> so, let's uh, read our next book. We're going to sing another song after that, and then one more book. So just bear with me, and I got you. Okay? So this book that we're going to read now is called Tiny T-Rex and the Very Dark Dark Swamp. Tiny T-Rex looks so cute, doesn't he? This book is by Jonathan Stutzman and illustrated by Jay Fleck, published by Chronicle Books in San Francisco. It is our first camp out in the backyard and we are nervous. We have never slept outside before. We are mighty be beasts. Sorry. <laughs> We are mighty beasts. I am a Rex. Pointy is a pointy, and Bob is my special squish. But even mighty beasts get tired if we can't sleep with our nightlights. See, so nightlights aren't just for you. Dinosaurs need them. Like, little itty bitty dinosaurs need them too. When I am inside, the dark doesn't seem so dark. Right? But when I am outside, the dark is very dark. Outside, there are no nighty lights to turn on. And when there are no nighty lights, the grumbles and nombies come out. We don't want the grumbles and the nombies, do we? No, we don't. Mother says, there's always a light shining somewhere tiny, even in the dark. If you are brave and look hard enough, you will find it. But it is hard to be brave when you are scared of the crawly creeps. And it is hard to look for something when you have your eyes shut. We don't want that. Pointy and I thought up a secret plan to be brave. When the very dark dark comes, we will be ready. First, we will build a hiding fort. To hide our snacks and ourselves. Oh, here we go. 
They're in the process of building the fort, hiding themselves, right? But you know what? I don't feel hidden. Next, we make special helmets to protect our brains from the grumbles and the zombies. I need a bigger helmet. The next part of our plan is the most important. We must hurry. We are running out of time. The crawly creeps are closing in. I hear the grumbles. They are close. <clears throat> Crunch, crunch, crunch. Run, Pointy! The Nambies are here! No! Run for your life! Run away! Run away! This is it! Our secret plan is almost ready! We're gonna catch those num Nambies, those Numbles and the, the, sorry, the Grumbles and the Nambies. Now we will not be scared of the very dark dark because we have made a super bright nighty light. Click! Let's see this super bright nighty light. Ooh, it looks like they're about to have a party up in here. Look at those lights. They kind of look a little bit like Christmas lights, huh? Hmm. Our plan did not work. The very dark dark has got us. <gasps> no way. I'm scared. Pointy is scared. Bob is scared. We're all scared together. Maybe we can be brave together too. Brave enough to open our eyes. Look very, very hard. Ooh, look at that. And find some light. Well, I guess Tiny T-Rex's mom was right after all. If you do look hard enough, you too can find the light by the wonderful stars at night, right? Okay. So let's do one last song and then I have to let you guys go because you know you have a day, I have a day, it's all good. So how about we use some dinosaurs I don't tend to use very often to sing this next song with us. Oh. So here we go. I like, oh, sorry, sorry, this is a song is called I Like Dinosaurs, and it's to the tune of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. I like dinosaurs so much, I wish they still lived with us. Some whether were big and some were small, some were fierce, but not them all. I like dinosaurs so much. I wish they still lived with us. Now, um, while this is a very cute sentiment, I do not wish that dinosaurs still lived with us because those dinosaurs sound pretty scary. I mean, we just read in that other book, the Brachiosaurus, was it? It was like 51 feet long. Uh, no, thank you. And the Tyrannosaurus Rex would eat everything that walked. Uh -uh. No, thank you. <laughs> I'm very fine without the dinosaurs. But they're very nice to learn about, and I find them very fascinating, but I do not want to live with the dinosaurs. <laughs> so, but you know what? In a lot of ways, dinosaurs were just like us, right? And we'll find that out in this book. How do dinosaurs say, I love you? This book is by Jane Yolen and Mark Teague. Well, how do you say, I love you? Right? You say, I love you. I love you, mommy. I love you, daddy. I love you, auntie. I love you, uncle. <laughs> I love you, cousin. I love you, brother. I love you, sister. This book is published by the Blue Sky Press, an imprint of Scholastic Incorporated, based in New York. You woke in the morning in such a bad mood. That ever happened to you? Yeah, I think it happens to the best of us. Then sat at the table and fussed with your food. And, but then you blew kisses and waved from the door. 
I love you. I love you, my dinosaur. So even when you wake up in a mood, you can still love. Out in the sandbox, you threw lots of sand. You ran from the slide after slapping my hand. That's not very nice, dinosaur. But you suddenly turned with a smile I adore. Oh, I'll always love you, my dinosaur. Sometimes you can be so mean, but so sweet at the same time. You moped through your nap time and slept not a wink. Oh, <laughs> looks like you're going to pay for that later, right? You flooded the house when you played in the sink. No, no, not the sink. But you got out the mop and then cleaned up the floor. I love you so much, little dinosaur. Well, that's very nice of the dinosaur. Clean up after yourself. Up in the car, you kept kicking my seat. Oh, that is not a pleasant feeling. And when we got out, you were dragging your feet. Why are you going to school? <laughs> but you held my hand tight when we walked in the store. I'll love you forever, my dinosaur. I love you. Dinner disaster, you made such a mess. Would you stay up past bedtime? The answer was yes. Especially after that nap. Ooh. Or sorry, after the lack of nap. That's a very bold one. But when you smile sweetly and hold back your roar, when you kiss me and hug me once, twice, even more. Oh, what a sweet dinosaur. That's when you give love, and I know this is true, because that's how a dinosaur says, I love you. I love you, little dinosaur. <laughs> well, that's it. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for joining me for story time. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed our stories, our songs. And if you guys want to read these books for yourselves, here is a list of what we read today. What the Dinosaurs Did Last Night, A Very Messy Adventure by Reef and Susan Tuma. Oh, say can you say dinosaur? <laughs> All About Dinosaurs by Bonnie Worth, illustrated by Steve Hathaway. Tiny T-Rex and the Very Dark Dark by Jonathan Stutzman, illustrated by Jay Fleck. And how do Dinosaurs Say I Love You by Jane Yolen and Mark T. Well, thank you so much for joining me for story time. I hope you guys have a wonderful